Around late 1933, civic leader Luther Ely Smith, returning to St. Louis from the George Rogers Clark National Historical Park in Vincennes, Indiana, saw the St. Louis Riverfront area and envisioned that building a memorial there would both revive the riverfront and stimulate the economy. He communicated his idea to Mayor Bernard Dickman, who on December 15, 1933, raised it in a meeting with city leaders. They sanctioned the proposal, and the nonprofit Jefferson National Expansion Memorial Association, JNEMA, pronounced, Jenny May, was formed. Smith was appointed chairman and Dickman vice chairman. Many locals did not approve of depleting public funds for the cause. Smith's daughter Sales related that when, people would tell him we needed more practical things, he would respond that, spiritual things, were equally important. The association expected that $30 million would be needed to undertake the construction of such a monument, about $488 million in 2020 dollars. It called upon the federal government to foot three quarters of the bill, $22.5 million. The suggestion to renew the riverfront was not original, as previous projects were attempted but lacked popularity. The Jefferson Memorial idea emerged amid the economic disarray of the Great Depression and promised new jobs. The project was expected to create 5,000 jobs for three to four years. Committee members began to raise public awareness by organizing fundraisers and writing pamphlets. They also engaged Congress by planning budgets and preparing bills, in addition to researching ownership of the land they had chosen, approximately one half mile in length, from 3rd Street East to the present elevated railroad. In January 1934, Senator Bennett Champ Clark and Representative John Cochran introduced to Congress an appropriation bill seeking $30 million for the memorial, but the bill failed to garner support due to the large amount of money solicited. In March of the same year, joint resolutions proposed the establishment of a federal commission to develop the memorial. Although the proposal aimed for only authorization, the bill incurred opposition because people suspected that JNEMA would later seek appropriation. On March 28 the Senate bill was reported out, and on April 5 it was turned over to the House Library Committee, which later reported favorably on the bills. On June 8, both the Senate and House bills were passed. On June 15, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the bill into law, instituting the United States Territorial Expansion Memorial Commission. The commission comprised 15 members, chosen by Roosevelt, the House, the Senate, and JNEMA. It first convened on December 19 in St. Louis, where members examined the project and its planned location. Meanwhile, in December, the JNEMA discussed organizing an architectural competition to determine the design of the monument. Local architect Louis Lebohm had drawn up competition guidelines by January 1935. On April 13, 1935, the Commission certified JNEMA's project proposals, including memorial perimeters, the historical significance, of the memorial, the competition, and the $30 million budget. Between February and April, the Missouri State Legislature passed an act allowing the use of bonds to facilitate the project. On April 15, then-Governor Guy B. Park signed it into law. Dickman and Smith applied for funding from two New Deal agencies, the Public Works Administration, headed by Harold Ix, and the Works Progress Administration, headed by Harry Hopkins. On August 7, both Ix and Hopkins assented to the funding requests, each promising $10 million, and said that the National Park Service NPS, would manage the memorial. A local bond issue election granting $7.5 million about $122 million in 2020 dollars for the memorial's development was held on September 10 and passed. On December 21, President Roosevelt signed Executive Order 7253 to approve the memorial, allocating the 82-acre area as the first National Historic Site. The order also appropriated $3.3 million through the WPA and $3.45 million through the PWA, $6.75 million in total. The motivation of the project was twofold, commemorating westward expansion and creating jobs. Some taxpayers began to file suits to block the construction of the monument, which they called a boondoggle. Built as a monument to the westward expansion of the United States, the arch typifies the pioneer spirit of the men and women who won the West, and those of a latter day to strive on other frontiers. The arch has become the iconic image of St. Louis, appearing in many parts of city culture. In 1968, three years after the monument's opening, 
the St. Louis phone directory contained 65 corporations with Gateway in their title and 17 with Arch. Arches also appeared over gas stations and drive-in restaurants. In the 1970s, a local sports team adopted the name Fighting Arches Street. Lewis Community College would later, when consolidating all athletic programs under a single banner, name its sports teams, Archers. Robert S. Chandler, an NPS superintendent, said, Most visitors are awed by the size and scale of the arch, but they don't understand what it's all about. Too many people see it as just a symbol of the city of St. Louis. The arch has also appeared as a symbol of the state of Missouri. On November 22, 2002, at the Missouri State Capitol, Lori Hausa Holden, wife of then-Governor Bob Holden uncovered the winning design for a Missouri coin design competition as part of the 50 states commemorative coin program. Designed by watercolorist Paul Jackson, the coin portrays three members of the Lewis and Clark expedition paddling a boat on the Missouri River upon returning to St. Louis, with the arch as the backdrop. Holden said that the arch was a symbol for the entire state. Four million visitors each year see the arch. The coin will help make it even more loved worldwide. A special license plate designed by Arnold Worldwide featured the arch, labeled with, Gateway to the West. Profits earned from selling the plates would fund the museum and other educational components of the arch. In 1966, the arch was given a special award for excellence from the American Institute of Steel Construction for being an outstanding achievement in technology and aesthetics. On February 9, 1967, the Arch received the Outstanding Civil Engineering Achievement Award of 1967 from the American Society of Civil Engineers. The Arch was once among Travel Plus Leisure's unofficial rankings for the most visited attraction in the world, after Lenin's Tomb, Disney World, Disneyland, and the Eiffel Tower. On February 22, 1990, the Arch received the American Institute of Architects IA 25-year award for its enduring significance that has withstood the test of time. It was declared, a symbolic bridge between East and West, past and future, engineering and art, that, embodies the boundless optimism of a growing nation. In 2007, the arch was ranked 14th on the AIA's, America's Favorite Architecture, list. The Gateway Arch is a 630-foot-tall monument in St. Louis, Missouri, United States. Clad in stainless steel and built in the form of a weighted catenary arch, it is the world's tallest arch and Missouri's tallest accessible building. Some sources consider it the tallest human-made monument in the Western Hemisphere. Built as a monument to the westward expansion of the United States and officially dedicated to the American people, the arch, commonly referred to as the Gateway to the West, is a national historic landmark in Gateway Arch National Park and has become an internationally recognized symbol of Saint. Lewis, as well as a popular tourist destination. The arch was designed by Finnish-American architect Eero Saarinen in 1947. Construction began on February 12, 1963, and was completed on October 28, 1965, at an overall cost of $13 million, equivalent to $83 million in 2018. The monument opened to the public on June 10, 1967. It is located at the site of the founding of St. Louis on the west bank of the Mississippi River.